next. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911. Then, hikers get the shock of their lives. So it's just the biggest snake I ever saw. And a father races for help as the venom takes effect on Rescue 911. On March 8, 1992, Nancy de Morgandy and her husband took their four children and some friends to a wooded area near their home in Pinellas Park, Florida. Before the day was over, they discovered that for all its beauty and wonder, nature can also hold some very deadly surprises. We decided to go on a nature walk to get away from the traffic and the people and just have fun. So off into the woods we went. My husband Daniel always walks a little bit ahead of us. He's got a walking stick he carries and kind of scares off any lizards or anything that us girls might not like around. <laughs> All right, careful. We make a lot of noise. Walking through these woods, of course, you're crunching on leaves and breaking branches. We didn't really think that there would be anything out there to really be afraid of. Eat that one. He's like, eat your head. <laughs> I got something in my shoe. Danny, wait a minute. Jeffrey's got something in his shoe. What is it? I felt a, a thud or a push on my left leg like Jean had kicked me like he wanted to like slide down my leg and walk. And I turned around to throw Jean back up on my hip when I looked at my oldest son, Noah, and he had this look in his eye like just sheer terror. And when I looked at what he was looking at, it was just the biggest snake I ever saw. And it made this sound that goes right down to your spine and just grabs your heart out. And I checked Noah, I says, you okay? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. And then I checked Sean and I started frisking him from his shoulders and I came down to his butt. I was scared that I didn't understand what had just happened. I turned around and I pulled his pants down and I, I just saw blood. I didn't know it was a rattlesnake until I heard the sound. It was like a death horn. It was all of my being. I ran just as hard and as fast as I could because I knew that this is a life and death situation. Because I knew the size of my son. I knew how big the snake was. And I just put just all this anger and frustration and just, just everything that I had in my body to, to running to get him to the fire station. Come on. As I was running through the woods, he's getting real sleepy. He's starting to get real heavy and real limp. And then I'm um, thinking to myself, oh my God, my son's going to die Come right on. in my arms. Come on. So I was yelling, like, please, Lord, just don't let this happen to my son. Daniel drove Jean to Pinellas Park County Fire Station 36, less than a mile away. <laughs> oh, 
One of the paramedics on duty that day was Max Melendez. Right away when I saw the fan marks, I was looking at at least three inches wide, blood still oozing out. I knew we had a big, bad snake. It looked like Dracula just bit him. Good boy, John. EMT Julie Heinecke was also at the station. Anytime someone comes in contact with a, a poisonous snake the size that this one was, you're talking about a good chance of death. We got help. What he needed was the antivenom. Hold on. If you get ready, put him on the board. I knew if I didn't get him to the hospital right away, one, two, three. the little boy would die. Tomorrow, during the Indy 500 race week, the staff at Wishard Memorial Hospital deals with fast times and furious tragedies. Don't miss a compelling episode of Trauma, Life in the ER, tomorrow on Discovery Health Channel. If faced with danger, what would you do? Would you react in time? See ordinary citizens become heroes. Rescue 911 continues next on Discovery Health Channel. The station had no ambulance. With time running out, Jean was put in a fire truck to be taken to the hospital. By the time I got out of the woods, I couldn't breathe. And I looked down the road, and that's when I saw the fire truck, and I just started running for it. Nancy! Sheer terror was going through my mind. All I wanted was to get to Jean, and I couldn't reach him. The harder I ran, the further away the fire truck got. That's when reality hit, that it was a lot worse than I thought. And I really didn't think I'd ever see him again. That's his six. Please advise the man on our side. He's still breathing. Stay with us. I'm sitting there, and I'm looking down at Jean, and he takes these three heavy sighs, and then his body went totally limp. I mean, I was holding his hand, and I could just feel his life force just, like, leave his body. That's what it felt like. A little bit longer. Okay. Julie, check his okay. out. I just fell to pieces, and I just started screaming, Jean, Jean, don't do this. Don't, don't die. At Humana Hospital Northside, three-year-old Jean was put under the care of emergency physician Beverly Wilshire. Antivenom can cause serious allergic reactions, in fact, even death in some instances. So I had to clinically assess the situation and decide, well, should I go ahead and give this without testing it first? It's okay, sweetie, it's okay. He looked listless and unresponsive and very ashen in color. The child was in shock. Okay, here we go. We checked his blood pressure, he didn't have one. At that point, I knew that things were very, very serious, and we had to get the antivenom in this child. I felt that if I hadn't given it as soon as possible, that his chances of survival, he would have died. All the machines around him, all the IVs, I wanted to take the pain for Jean. I wanted to take his place. I couldn't stand to see what he looked like. The more I looked at him, the more I thought I was going to lose him. John was transferred to All Children's Hospital, where he was given additional antivenom and blood transfusions. As the moments and the hours passed, Jean blood pressure kept dropping and it got harder and harder to go in and be with him the harder they tried to fight the venom the more the blood pressure dropped the more the blood broke down and it got to the point where everything they tried seemed to make him sicker after three days the little boy's condition slowly began to improve. Yes, boy. Yes, mama's boy. The first time Jean asked me if we could go home, I knew he was going to be okay. 
Two months later, he has completely recovered. Jean and my family are the luckiest people in the world. I can't believe that he was so sick. And you look at him today and it's like nothing ever happened. He's so bouncy and full of life that when I look at Jean, my heart just melts. Hold on. Hold on. I could never show enough gratitude to the paramedics and the nurses and the doctors. They gave me my baby's life. I thank them. And I love them. Give him a carrot. Here, put it on your hand flat like that. Real flat. Hi. There you go. Real flat. I did everything humanly possible to save my son, and I know that Max did everything he could, and the hospital did everything they could, but when it, it all comes down to it, it just wasn't his time to go. Boy. <laughs> Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.